Hi, and thanks for joining us for our uh, webinar this afternoon on the latest results from the Ag Economy Barometer Surveys. Uh, I'm Jim Mintert, Director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, and joining me today is my colleague David Widmar, Senior Research Associate uh, here at the Center for Commercial Agriculture. And David, we've got uh, some interesting results to talk about with respect to the barometer. Um, it's been a little bit of a change, a little bit of an uptick in the barometer value. In fact, let's just take a look at that. Um, the barometer increased on the July survey to a value of 139, up from 131 a month ago. And, you know, we had that surge back in the winter following the election, and we hit a peak of 153. But when you take that out, these are the strongest barometer values we've had since we've been collecting data in the fall of 2015. Yeah, and it's important to note that we survey producers the third week of July. Uh, so there's some variability in the commodity markets that might have a small impact. But uh, after trading several months at 130 or around 130 back to February, uh, producer sentiment kind of broke out here in the latest month at 139. It's also worth noting that the peak that we saw back in 2016 during the growing season was 112 back in July of 2016. So we're considerably higher today uh, the, at 139 than what we saw at the highest of the growing season back last year. Yeah, so we've lost some of that surge we saw following the election, but we have stabilized at a level that's uh, quite a bit higher uh, than what we saw this time last year and, and really throughout the bulk of the surveys we've been conducting. And it does suggest that there's some interesting dynamics taking place in the production ag sector with respect to somewhat of an improvement uh, from producers' perspective in the economy. So let's dig into that maybe just a little bit more. Um, and just for a reminder for some of our listeners that haven't been with us in the past, this barometer is based on a survey of 400 producers nationwide uh, across all the major uh, commodity sectors. We don't focus on the specialty crop production, uh, but all the other major ag sectors are included here. Um, and as you look at it, it, it does provide a, a pretty good measure of the overall sentiment with respect to uh, the U.S. ag production sector. And so we ask five questions every month that help us compute the barometer. And then we decompose those five questions into the two sub-indices, which I've got on the screen at the moment, which is the index of current conditions and the index of future expectations looking farther into the future. And as you look at those numbers, David, they're up as well. Yeah, uh, month over month, so June over July, they both trended higher. A bigger jump here in that index of current conditions there in brown. It went from about 131 points in June to 142 in July. Uh, the index of future expectations in the greenish color there from 132 up to 138. It's really important to step back and recognize that um, while the barometers kind of went sideways in the last few months, there's been kind of some some tug and pull here from these different sub-indices. That index of current conditions uh, going back to August has been steadily upticking. Uh, kind of 10 out of the last 12 months has posted a higher score. Uh, and that's really been a part of that key drive up here in the last few months. Whereas in that index of future expectations, we saw that surge right after the election. It peaked in January as long with the overall barometer and then has uh, settled uh, again, kind of trading at about 130 points in that indice as well. But it's gone sideways mostly in the last few months. Yeah, and, you know, David, I think the thing that's really interesting to me is when I look at that index of current conditions and compare it to where it was last summer. Last summer, uh, that index of current conditions was trading down in the, in the 80s. Uh, now we're at a level uh, of around 140. Uh, pretty dramatic change in sentiment over that longer period of time. And again, is sort of indicative of um, a significant movement in people's sentiment. I mean, I think conditions are still challenging in, in much of U.S. production agriculture right now, but there has definitely been an improvement this year versus last year, and those year-to-year -year comparisons are, are really interesting. Uh, it's really important to note last year about this time, there was a lot of uncertainty as to how big the U.S. crop was going to be, but it was erring on the side of being a very large crop, and so producers and were worried about that, and the commodity markets had begun to settle lower uh, in response to that, especially when we got into August. We saw commodity prices really uh, get low in August, and we saw the sentiment as well get uh, to 80 points uh, there in August. Let's take a look at uh, specifically one of the questions we pose every month, and that question is, would you say that your farm operation today 
is financially better off, worse off, or about the same compared to a year ago. And as you look at the data on there, um, at first glance, maybe if, particularly if you look at the percentage of people reporting better, it might not look like that much different. But actually, if you look at uh, a comparison of now versus a year ago, it's quite a bit different. Um, a year ago, only 3% of the respondents in the survey were saying conditions were um, better off than they were a year earlier. Uh, on our most recent survey here in July of 17, 14% of the respondents said that. So when you make that comparison, that's a pretty big jump. Uh, when you look at the percentage of people reporting worse uh, than a year earlier, uh, last year this time it was 70% uh, responding that way. Uh, on our most recent survey, 39%. Kind of reinforces what we're seeing uh, on the broader index itself. Yeah, no, I think this is a really great um, graph here that captures uh, what we've been talking about, that current conditions and the broad index. I like to think about it if we had 10 farmers in a room. Uh, last July at this time, seven of them would have said that their uh, farm operation was worse off compared to uh, July 2015. Uh, and really none of them would have said that they were feeling better off. And the rest, the three would have been about the same. We don't have that on the chart here. Today, we have those same 10 or another group of 10 farmers in the room. Four of them are saying that they're worse off than last July. One or one and a half of them are saying they're feeling better off. And the balance, about uh, four or five of them are saying they're about the same. So uh, there's been an improvement here. Uh, and it's really from a, we're not saying it's good. There's not an upturn to a, or a turn to a good time here in production agriculture, but we were improving from a pretty bleak and dire and gloomy situation that we saw a year or so ago. Yeah, and I think that's really the point. We're not saying that things are great out there for most producers, but we are saying that people are clearly feeling better about the situation today than they were this time last year. Um, you know, one of the questions we asked uh, periodically is the, uh, whether or not people expect higher commodity prices uh, in the next 12 months. And so we've got a chart that shows uh, the way people respond to that question for corn, soybeans, and wheat going back to October of 15. And the important part of that chart, at least from my perspective, David, is you know, as you look at April of this year versus July of this year, and we could see that people had become more optimistic about all of those major commodities. The one exception is one we don't have on the, on the slide, and we did see a, a little bit of a downtick with respect to expectations about cotton prices, but corn, soybeans, and wheat, people were more optimistic about prices this summer than they were uh, back in April in particular. Yeah, uh, and this is showing us the share of respondents who, who said they thought prices would be higher. 39% um, of respondents thought corn prices would be higher uh, 12 months from July, so July 2018. And for each of the three commodities up there, corn, wheat, and soybeans, that's the highest share saying, hi, the largest share saying ex expectation of higher prices uh, that we've seen in any of the previous times that we've asked that survey question. Yeah, again, just another indication that people are feeling that this situation has changed relative to where we were earlier this year and, and in some cases relative to last year. We asked that same question with respect to livestock prices uh, and, and uh, meat animal products uh, prices, so beef, farm level milk prices, and slaughter hog prices, and not quite the same uh, degree of ag agreement among producers out there, but still maybe a little more optimism, particularly on the beef side, uh, than what we saw back uh, earlier in the year. Um, interesting to see a little bit more optimism showing up on the crop side than on the livestock side. And in both cases, this livestock survey question came up in the June survey, so a little bit uh, different time frame. But for both of these commodities, they're on the higher range of those who have said they expect higher commodity prices. So not at a peak here for livestock, but definitely on the higher end of uh, what we've seen in the yeah, past. Yeah, that's a good point. When you look back to the, the history of the survey going all the way back to the uh, late fall of 2015, you're right. Um, so one of the questions we posed this month, and this is a question we, we started asking earlier this year, is to get people to focus specifically on what they think is going to happen with respect to uh, commodity futures prices, specifically on corn and soybeans here. So David, walk us through that a little bit, because it's kind of interesting to see the change here that's taking place. Yeah, so uh, in April and in July, we asked the same question. We asked, do producers think that the corn futures contract for that December 2017 contract would exceed $4.25 per bushel uh, between the survey time question and 
uh, the fall of 2017. Back in April, 28% of producers said, yeah, I think that futures contract will exceed 425 for corn. In our July survey, we've seen a sharp uptick uh, in the shares saying they thought that was possible. 45%, almost half of respondents thought that we could see a rally in that corn futures price to get that 425. I did a quick look earlier. About 415 is that contract high that we saw it set back in, uh, I believe, at the end of June or it might have been the first of July. Uh, so we backed off that high. We backed off that high when the survey was done in the third week of July. But producers uh, are more optimistic in July than they were in April that we could see that rally. And 425 is a really important point for corn because in our Purdue crop budgets, we start to see a break even or a small economic profit for producers once we get to that 425. So that's uh, kind of a stretch goal for the commodity markets, but also a good point for producers in their crop budget situation. And, you know, obviously that optimism up about prices also reflects, obviously, people's underlying concerns about the condition of the crop, right? And as we looked at, uh, particularly in parts of the Western Corn Belt, concerns about hot, dry weather and drought conditions. Uh, here in the Eastern Corn Belt, we've got lingering effects of too much water, uh, uh, particularly some delayed planting and, and replanting, et cetera. Uh, so you've got some concerns about the crop and where it's headed, and people are a little more optimistic about, about prices. We asked the same question or a similar question with respect to soybeans. And soybeans, the, the price level we focused on was 1050. Um, again, that was selected a little bit based on recent prices as well as looking at those Purdue crop budgets. Uh, and again, people are more optimistic. The difference between April of this year and, and the July survey, not quite as big as what we saw on the corn side, but still people markedly more optimistic about where soybean prices, soybean futures prices are headed. Uh, between now and, and uh, when those contracts go off the board. It's important to note, uh, back in October, kind of to help think about where we were a year or so ago, last October we asked producers a very similar question. We said, for that July 2017 corn futures contract, uh, do you think it's possible for that contract to fall below $3 per bushel? It was around $340, uh, but we were harvesting a, another big, uh, another large U.S. corn crop, uh, record acreage, and record yields uh, feared. Uh, wouldn't it be possible for that futures contract to dip below four, $3 a bushel during the winter and spring? And about 27% of producers thought that, yeah, that was possible. And so there was a lot of concern last year, and that's when we saw sentiment really low, is how low could commodity prices go? And about a third of producers thought that uh, a sub $3 futures price, which we now know that didn't happen. We spent most of that trading mm -hmm. contract above 350, and a couple times it got to 390. Uh, so we've been, on, I guess, on the higher range of expectations that we would have thought of a year ago. So that's been good news. And of course, strong exports have been a really important part of uh, how we've gotten there. So beyond commodity prices, we also focus on, on some other aspects of people's farming operations. And one of those is we visit periodically is people's expectations with respect to farmland prices. So I've got the chart up on the screen now for farmland price expectations 12 months from now. We report the percentage of people that expect lower prices and the percentage of people that were expecting higher prices. And as you look at that chart, the thing that's probably most striking for me, David, is I look at starting at about March of 2016 all the way through the, the May survey, our most recent time for, for posing this particular question, the percentage of people expecting lower prices for farmland 12 months from now keeps dropping. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a really uh, good point. We've seen that just continually to drop. And at, sl at different times, you see upticks in the share expecting higher prices there in, in gray. We're going to ask that question on our upcoming survey. So uh, we encourage everyone to stay tuned and to join us for that uh, upcoming survey to see what the results are from that. But uh, I think this is a really important measure of the health of the ag economy, see where uh, producers expect this land market to go in the next 12 months. We actually asked a new question in our recent survey, and we asked a similar setup about farmland price expectations, but for five years down the road. Uh, so while 30% uh, think that lower farmland prices are possible in the next 12 months, that dropped to 15% or so who expect lower farmland prices five years out. About 83, 84% of respondents thought that when they think five years from today, uh, they expect higher or about the same farmland prices in their market, in their local area. I think, again, that's a, another sign of strength in, uh, or, or optimism and strength in the farmland markets and where the 
production ag economy is going to be headed when they think about their assets today and that they're going to be similar or larger in five years from and, now. And those questions, that response to that five year ahead question that we posed this month is consistent with the results we've been getting when we ask people, do you think farmland is a good investment? Yeah. And a majority of the respondents, every time we pose that question, have said, yes, we still think farmland is a good long-term investment. Um, so I guess to kind of recap, there's still the potential for another adjustment or correction, and producers are telling this uh, for maybe late 17, early 18, but they're still optimistic about what's in store for the next five years. And a lot of them don't expect this future correction to really uh, stick around or continue downward as they look farther down the road. Yeah, good point. So let's shift gears just a little bit because one of the things we do every summer is pose many of the same questions that we pose to producers to a group of agricultural economists around the uh, nation. So uh, the Agriculture and Applied Economics Association has a long history of uh, surveying its members with respect to commodity price outlook and, and some other variables. Uh, we've taken on that responsibility here the last couple of years, and it provides the opportunity for us to compare and contrast what ag economists are telling us versus what producers are telling us. So let's take a look at that uh, just briefly. Uh, so one of the things we looked at was the barometer itself, and we used the responses that uh, those ag economists give us to questions that were virtually identical to the ones we posed to producers. And I've got that up in the screen now, and I've, I've posted not only the results from this year's survey, but also uh, what people told us, uh, the Ag Economist told us a year ago. So this time last year, the Ag Economist were much more negative about the Ag Economy than producers were. On this most recent survey, that kind of changed. They are actually matching up pretty well with respect to their sentiment about what's taking place in the, in the U.S. Ag Economy with a reading of about 130, a little bit under what we came in on, on the producer side, but not much. And I think it's really important to note, a lot of times people look at these results um, and they, uh, for the producers and scratch their heads and say, wait a minute, the crop budgets aren't markedly better. Uh, net farm income from the USDA isn't uh, markedly better. In fact, it's uh, estimated to go down in 17. So why is producer sentiment higher? Well, we're not measuring profitability or income. We're measuring sentiment. And not only have producers uh, marked an uptick in sentiment over the last 12 months, so have agricultural economists. Uh, and we also have a third group we survey from time to time that we've talked about a lot. It's this agricultural thought leaders, bankers and input suppliers and manufacturers and equipment representatives uh, who also have marked an uptick in sentiment over the last 12 months. So uh, this uptick in sentiment has been uh, observed across three different groups of folks who work with ag producers on a regular basis. And I think it's uh, important to note that sentiment's at a much different place today than what we were a year ago. Yeah, good point. And so to maybe drive that home a little bit uh, further, uh, let's take a look at farmland price expectations because <laughs> this one actually did have a little bit of a difference. So to, to be clear on that, when we surveyed ag economists, on most of the questions that we include in the barometer, the responses were actually fairly similar to what producers were telling us. Um, but the one that was maybe a little bit different was farmland price expectations. So this is a version of the slide that we had up just a couple of minutes ago, but now we've added in on the right-hand side the responses from the AAEA, the Ag Agricultural and Applied Economics Association members that responded to our survey. And as you look at it, the ag economists in general were more negative about where farmland prices are headed, at least in the short run at least 12 months out. So farmland prices from ag economist perspective uh, are still maybe on a downward uh, trend, uh, more so than, than what producers are suggesting. And as you can see the, the, the contrast there, um, that was kind of interesting, right? So we, we're picking up similar kinds of sentiment from the ag economist, but on a major asset class, they are still looking for more of an adjustment in farmland prices, and we didn't specifically ask about cash rent, but as I visit with ag economists, they also are expecting some continued downward adjustments in cash rental values, um, more so than what producers apparently are expecting. And what we see here is three out of 10 producers tell us they think farmland prices have some uh, adjustment to do in the next year, while five out of 10 or half of agricultural economists expect that to go. Uh, so it's not an overwhelming majority or not all of ag economists think that's uh, the case, but uh, about half of them do. So we do see a larger share of, of ag economists expecting that. So we'll see uh, what happens. And I think we actually have a webinar to, to discuss that 
the latest results out of here in Indiana That's coming right. up. The Purdue Land Value Survey uh, was conducted earlier this summer, and those results are, are coming available uh, as we speak, I guess. So we're going to have a webinar focused on that with uh, colleagues uh, Craig Dobbins, who is a professor of ag economics here in the department and has been in charge of that land value surveys for a number of years, along with Michael Langemeyer from the Center for Commercial Agriculture. So we'll focus on those results in depth at our next uh, barometer, our next survey on our uh, webinar on August 16th. Uh, if you're not registered for that, we'd encourage you to just go to the Center for Commercial Ag uh, website and uh, you can register for the website and you'll get the email link just as you did for this particular uh, webinar as well. So with that, David, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your interest in the Ag Economy Barometer and, and the results from our surveys. Uh, we'll have another webinar focused on the barometer a little later this fall. Uh, take a look at, the, at our website and you'll have an opportunity to sign up for that as well. And we hope to see you here in just a couple of weeks. Thank you very much.